Hello, and welcome to this edition of the Indiana 4-H Animal Science web series, Dog Showmanship. My name's Britt Copeland. I'm the 4-H Extension Educator in Brown County. I'm a dog lover myself. I've showed dogs all through 4-H, and now I continue to be involved and judge some dog shows. I'm not the all-around expert, but I'm a, I know enough to make myself dangerous, share some basics with you, and some tips and tricks on how to win your class. Today we're going to talk about how it's judged, the basics, and then we're going to go through the parts of a showmanship class, such as the line up and stack, the all go around, the individual exam, individual gates and patterns, and the appearance of the handler. So, how is it judged? It's judged on four basic tenets, the proper breed presentation, your skill in presenting the dog, execution of the ring procedure, and appearance and conduct of the dog and handler. To your right, you can see the uh, comment sheet. This is how you're judged at the Indiana State Fair Dog Show. If you'd like to follow along or see where I've gotten my resources, you can go to 4-h.purdue.edu, hit projects at the top toolbar, scroll down to animal science, hit dog, and then you can find all these resources on showing dogs in 4-h. The top highlighted portion under publications is the showmanship guide. It has a lot of good stuff, including diagrams of the different patterns you'll be expected to know. Under scorecards, the t uh, highlighted cards are what's used to evaluate competitors in competition. All right, so the basics, showing your breed. Just a note, to be successful or to have fun in 4-H dog showmanship, you do not need to have a purebred dog, okay? If he's a mystery mutt, if he's just brown, that's fine. All dogs can be successful with the right training and patience from the handler. However, a part of showmanship is knowing how to best represent your breed. Breeds are shown very differently. They're stacked differently, they're gated differently. So knowing what breed a dog you have or what breed your dog best represents is very important. So you can talk to experienced breeders, your um, 4-H dog leader, or other knowledgeable people. Have them look at your dog, find the defining characteristics that are most like the breed that they are, and that's what you'll put on your score sheet and how you'll represent them in the ring. It's important to note that you need to choose one breed. So if you've got a lab and a poodle, put what it most looks like. So put lab cross, don't put lab poodle cross. There are seven different groups that 193 different recognized AKC breeds are organized into. The groups include such things as herding, sporting, toy, working. They're all grouped by what job the breed does. So it's a good idea to look up what group your dog breed is in and the defining and breed characteristics of your breed. The best place to do this is on the AKC website. Just go to akc.org, type in your breed, and then look up the breed standard. We'll talk about what you need to look up later on in the presentation. All right, before you hit the ring, it's time to gear up. On the screen is two examples of showmanship leads. The first is a martingale and the second is just a clip lead with a show chain. You do not want your lead to stand out. In showmanship, a tight upright lead conveys professionalism. You wanna be able to hide your lead in your hand and not have any excessive lead hanging out. If you've got a really big dog, you'll need a really short lead, vice versa with small dogs. The martingale is preferred for smaller dogs or dogs with a lot of hair. Talk to your dog leader about what lead you should get for your dog.
All right, so let's talk about the first thing you have to do, stacking your dog. In dog showmanship, you need to know how to best set up your dog so that their conformation puts their best foot forward. Stacking your dog involves placing the feet in a square so that the dog's top line is nice, flat, and smooth. Start with your front legs, get them nice and even, grasp by the top of the elbow, then move on to the back legs, grasp by the top of the hock. As you can see, Tip here, who was our gracious volunteer dog, has came out of retirement to give us some videos on how to show your dog and dog showmanship. Breeds like herding dogs are usually stacked up in a square. Different breeds, such as German Shepherds, are not stacked up in a square. We wanted the top line level before, and here it's sloping. This is one example of how important it is to know your breed or what dog your or what breed your dog best represents before you go into the ring so you know how to best show them. Another important part of showmanship is to always keep the dog between you and the judge. Pretend the judge has cooties and you always need your dog to protect you. Here our assistant is showing how to change sides when the judge changes sides. In this video, the judge is holding the camera. Watch again. She's also using treats to get her dog to have an expression. An expression means that their ears are up, their eyes are alert, and they're looking their best. It's important to work your dog on the mat, but not overwork so much that it causes a distraction. All right. Now we're going to move on to the procedural parts of showing your dog in 4-H showmanship. The first thing you'll have to do is gate into the ring. Gating is a controlled trot. It should be proportional to your dog's size and breed. A toy poodle, you'll probably walk your dog in. A border collie, you'll probably have to sprint. It all depends on how big your dog is and how they move. This is an example of a class. Classes are usually five to eight competitors, but that also depends on just your county and who shows up for the day. An all go around will mean that everyone gates their dog in a line behind each other. In this video, the Shetland Sheepdog, which is smaller, is in front of the Australian Shepherd and is moving a lot more slowly. Because you want to treat the mat in showmanship like your own personal stage, our assistant here is pausing in the corners so that the judge gets a good picture of the gate on the straightaways. In this way, she's best showing off her dog. It's also important to notice the difference between the two dogs. The black dog is gating. The brown dog is not. She's doing something called pacing. Pacing is when the right front and the right back leg move together. As you can see on this straightaway, it kind of looks like she's bouncing from side to side and doesn't look as smooth. The black dog is gating, which is something you should be doing. It's a controlled trot. So the right front and the right back will move together and then apart. That gate is a lot smoother, makes the top line look better, and the dog better represented. Have someone help you and watch you gate and give you um, advice. It's often hard to tell if your dog's gating uh, all by yourself. So having a second pair of eyes telling you what speed looks best is um, really important. And just because your dog is shown at a dead run on television doesn't mean that you'll have to uh, show your dog at a dead run at your 4-H show. 
It's all about the individual dog. So take some time with your leader or a trusted friend to get your dog's gait looking great. After you gate your dog around, you'll line up and stack. Generally, in showmanship, we work off of mats that are set up in a square with a diagonal down the middle. You'll always stack on the outside of the square. Make sure you keep a good distance between you and the other handlers. You don't want to be too close where your dog can smell or get distracted by the other dog. Just pretend that there's a giant Great Dane in between you two, and that is the appropriate distance. Stack on the edge of the mat. Make your dog expressive. Again, this means using bait to get their head up, their ears up, and their eyes bright, like the two dogs in the picture. You'll notice that one handler is on the ground and one isn't. Again, that's all due to the different breed and size of your dog. Look up your breed standard to find how you should show your dog. After you line up one at a time, the judge will come and examine your dog. What happens here is the judge is looking at how your dog is presented. They'll check their hair, their nails, their feet, and then ask to see the bite. It's important that you have control of your dog the entire time. So when the judge comes up to you, shorten your leash, take your leash together, put two fingers underneath the collar or chain, and move it up to the back of the skull of the dog so that you have complete control. Place your hand under the muzzle, just so that the judge knows that the, the dog is not going to interact. This is not to be taken offense by if you think your dog is aggressive. It's for the peace of mind and safety of the judge. Let's see it all put together. Judge comes in, takes control of her dog. He moves the paw out of place. She smooths down the hair, puts the paws back, baits her dog, gets ready. Now the judge is asking to see the bite. She takes her leash underneath the dog's mouth, lifts up the lips of the dog so that the judge can see the teeth. Showing the bite is often something that dogs don't like doing, so it's important to do this often and inter introduce it gradually. Try peanut butter and treats to get your dog to Get used to showing the bite. If you think your dog will bite you, have a trusted adult or your dog leader help you show the bite. In practice, that is. You'll notice that in some of the videos, there's the table. Well, this is what it's used for. Small dogs during the individual examination. When you put your dog on the table, do not carry your dog across the ring. Instead, bring them straight up to the table, lift them up, put them down. When they're on the table, it's important that you have control of your dog the entire time. You don't want your dog jumping off. Again, this is something that some dogs might have to get used to. You can put your dog on the table in a down so that they feel more comfortable, feed them treats, give them love, make it a positive experience. Then work your way up to a stand by having them sit, more praise and treats, and then a stand. Eventually, they'll get used to it. A dog on the table is stacked the same way as a dog on the ground. All right, so let's move on to what happens after the exam we go into an individual gate. Once the judge, the judge is finished with the exam, they'll ask for a pattern. We're gonna go over two of the most common patterns. The first is the L pattern. In the diagram below, the smaller black triangle with the squiggle is the dog. It's pre pretty self-explanatory. You'll remember that you'll always wanna keep the judge in between 
the dog in between you and the judge. For that, you'll need to switch sides. In showmanship, the dog is, on, is shown on both sides. Let's see how this looks in practice. The judge is holding the camera in the corner, so our assistant switches her hand and puts tip on the other side. Gates down, gates back, always keeping the dog between her and the judge. When you return, you'll want to take the dog straight up to the judge. Here she's doing something that's called a free stack. This isn't a very good example of it, but he does a lot better in the next video. So, the individual gate, the triangle. Again, pretty self-explanatory. You can see on the optional triangle, there's something called a, well, that little squiggly triangle thing in the corner there is indicating a courtesy turn. A courtesy turn is optional. They're often difficult. I would recommend in the triangle that you only do a courtesy turn if you're moving quickly and you need to gather your dog before making that sharp corner. If you have a tiny dog and you can walk that corner tightly, then don't do the courtesy turn. In this example, she will use a courtesy turn. A courtesy turn is just a spin all the way around. She's using treats in her voice to get her dog to go around her quickly. Then she comes up to the judge, free stacks her dog. A free stack is when the dog sets his feet automatically. You'll have to work your way up to this. Once you have a good free stack, it should be your go-to. Only hand stack your dog when the judge asks or, where, or when you're coming up for your exam. The judge will want to see that you know how to do this, but will appreciate how quick and smooth you look free stacking the rest of the show. All right. One more movement we're going to handle is not really a pattern, but it's something that you need to know how to do. It's a runoff or a down and back. Usually this is used as a tiebreaker. The judge will take two handlers, take them off the mat, and then ask them for a down and back. There's two different ways you can do it. You can do it together or at your own pace. If the judge asks you to do a down and back together, that means that the larger or faster dog should adapt to the smaller dog's pace, and you should gate your dogs as uh, a unit down to the other end, do a hand change, and then come straight back to, you, to where you were. If he asks to do it at your own pace, that means you do not need to adapt your gait. Simply gait down, wait for the slower dog to come down, turn together, and then gait back to the judge. A down and back alone is when there is only one person. Here we're demonstrating a down and back alone. In this video, the judge is imaginary and at the end of the mat. I have the camera here to show a close-up on how to do a hand change. When you're doing a hand change, you'll want to turn your dog into you. You can see how she's got the lead upright, spins her dog into her, changes hands, all the while keeping the excess lead neatly tucked away. One more time, spins the dog in, and goes. An important note is the use of bait in showmanship. While it is allowed, never underestimate the power of just positive reinforcement or muttering gibberish under your breath to get your dog uh, excited to go. All right. Appearance of the dog. In showmanship, 
it's your time to put your best foot forward and to exhibit your animal in the best condition you can. You can do this by grooming your dog, making sure that the coat is free of debris and stains, and that you can touch your dog without getting hair uh, or shedding to occur. The ears, you should wipe out with a wet wipe or damp cloth. You should also check your ear dog's ears uh, regularly for infection, debris, and that kind of thing. Your dog's nails should be trimmed. Do this gradually. Uh, the quick, which is the part that has the blood in the nail, uh, adapts when you trim it and it gets smaller. So you need to trim your dog's nails regularly and just a little bit off so that they don't bleed. If you only trim your dog's nails right before the show, they're probably going to bleed. So do this gradually over time to combat that. The paw pads for long-haired dogs like Shelties, Australian Shepherds, needs to be uh, shaved out. That's just the part in between the dog's paws. As you can see, the outside of the paws are not shaved in this picture. The nose just needs to be clear so that on. You can take a wet wipe to it, shine it up. The eyes need to be bright free of any boogers or tear stains. I put whiskers on here. Some dog breeds call for you to trim their whiskers. If you're only showing your dog once or twice, I'd recommend not sh shaving your dog's whiskers as they use those whiskers to protect themselves, especially the whiskers around their eyes so that they don't get poked. They can feel how close they are by the tension on their whiskers. And finally, let's talk about how you look, the appearance of the handler. We have three good examples of uh, showmanship attire. You do not have to dress up this fancy, but again, you should put your best foot forward. An important thing to note is shoes. You need soft soled lace up shoes. Remember, don't wear any high heels or boots or anything that could crush your dog's paw if you accidentally step on them. They also need to not be open-toed in case your dog steps on you. Ladies, wear a form-fitting skirt down to your knees. Don't wear a skirt that flows or billows out because as you run, that skirt will hit your dog in the face. You can also wear dress pants. It's perfectly acceptable. Your top should be modest. Remember that you are going to be bending down and running. When you um, are choosing your showmanship attire, remember that you're going to be moving and practice moving to make sure that the outfit you pick does not restrict your movement. Guys, dress pants and a dress shirt is fine, or you can go the whole suit route. Um, something to note, when you're wearing a tie, you will be bending down. So it's a good idea to get a safety pin and pin the tie keeper to your shirt so that it doesn't hit your dog in the face. Also, make sure that you can move in it. The color of your dress clothes also makes a difference. Something really important to note is um, if you've got a black dog, don't wear black pants because your dog will disappear into your legs. If you've got a yellow dog, don't wear khakis. It's also a good idea to match your showmanship lead to your pants. That way, it'll disappear and give a cleaner look. Well, that's been our presentation today. I hope you learned something and had some fun. If you've got any questions about dog showmanship, my contact information is listed below. The 4-H Dog Project is all about learning about your dog, having fun with your dog, and creating a lasting partnership. You should be having fun, and if you're not having fun, you're doing something wrong. So, I hope you enjoy this and try out dog showmanship in your area or county. If you can, complete this survey link so we know how many people watch this video.
this uh, link will be included below. If you have any other questions, contact Courtney Steerwalt. She is the Indiana 4-H Livestock Specialist, and her contact information is included on the slide. Thank you for tuning in, and have a great rest of your day.